All kids out the pool. All kids out the pool. It's time for CBM Productions. All kids out. What is up, everyone? I am CB Air Productions, and today's video is, a. Uh, it's not gonna be very comfortable for me to talk about. I usually talk about very fun things on this channel. If you're a regular viewer, you know, I usually talk about, like, comic book movie stuff, talk about mo just movies in general, video games, you know, just, like, fun, neat stuff to talk about, stuff we enjoy, stuff that entertains us, something that enlightens us. <sighs> Today is not that. Today, we're gonna be talking about some pretty nasty stuff. So yeah, we'll be covering a variety of topics. The sexual exploits of many people in the Hollywood sphere, many people outside the Hollywood sphere taking advantage of that and profiting off of people's likenesses, people idolizing celebrities in the Hollywood sphere that they don't even know, people making content and posting stuff without their consent. So yeah, it's gonna be a very, very light video for today, people. Our main baseline for today's video is kind of tying all these topics together. Is news it girl of Hollywood, Wednesday Adams herself, Miss Jenna Ortega? who has clearly shot into the stratosphere in the past month or so ever since Wednesday dropped on Netflix, and she's garnered a bunch of positive attention because of that. Brand new fans, people, you know, discovering her previous works and appreciating it, her getting offered more roles and getting offered to, you know, have a more um, speakable platform to talk about her issues and things that she's passionate about, tons of trends based on her dance moves. But with that, it's also a two-sided coin, and it's also a lot of negative attention that has happened because of her popularity skyrocketing. So we're going to get into the very nitty gritty of the absolute worst for society and try to expose a very gross underbelly of our society that every popular female in any industry, whether it's music, movies, TV, etc. seem to suffer from time and time again. But before we really deep dive into this video, I will put some trigger warnings out there for topics that might be sensitive to some, such as unwanted sexual attention by Redditors, crossing a lot of boundaries regarding, you know, someone's sexuality, and lots of other really icky stuff. But there will be topics in this video that are a little more conservative, and no, I'm not talking about politics. So if there is a topic that does interest you more than some others, you can just jump around and find the ones that interest you most. But anyways, let's not waste any more time, and let's get into it. Starting off, I will be giving an overall view of Jenna Ortega's history in the film industry and how she became just the new it girl of Hollywood seemingly out of nowhere to many. To my folks watching this video who aren't familiar with her work, Jenna Marie Ortega is a 20-year-old Latina American actress who has been working in the film and TV industry for over a decade so far in her career. I just hit its butt so hard. She started off doing one-off small roles in TV and commercials, as most actors in the industry do, until she got her first starring role in the Disney Channel sitcom Stuck in the Middle, playing the role of Harley Diaz, the middle child of seven siblings, as she tries to navigate through her life growing up. The show would last from 2016 to 2018 with a total of 57 episodes over the course of its three seasons. After that, Miss Ortega would do mostly supporting roles over the next couple years, from shows like Jane the Virgin, playing the younger version of the main character of the show over the course of the show's five-year run, playing the role of Ellie Alves in U Season 2, showing a more mature side of her work, Everybody wants to fuck the and several movies such as The Babysitter Killer Queen, Yes Day, and The Fallouts, where she would play the lead in Veda Cavill, who struggles to cope with her mental health after surviving a school shooting in her local high school. It's a highly underrated film that I definitely recommend you check on HBO Max, if Warner Bros. Discovery hasn't already taken it off the service. Please have mercy, Mr. Zaslav. Please. Nani? Now, with that all being said, I don't think anyone really expected 2022 to be the year of the Ortega. I don't even think Jenna herself would predict this. But this year has comprised some of her biggest roles in her entire career thus far. Starting off the year, we had Scream 5 come out, where she plays the role of Tara Carpenter, the younger sister of the main character Sam, who is consequently the daughter of Billy Loomis, one of the killers from the original Scream film. Although she's not the main character in the movie, she has some of the best lines and scenes in the entire movie. I still prefer the Papadook. This would actually be the first film where I actually would recognize Jenna Ortega from, the first one that I genuinely remember her role. I had seen a couple films with her before, like Babysitter Killer Queen. Uh, I didn't watch Stuck in the Middle, I was that was past my pro on Disney Channel, and I think she also played like a crip in Iron Man 3. Never seen a child actor play a gang member before, but that was quite interesting. But this would go to show how recognizable she would become in her career over the course of this year. After that, she would be in a string of more horror films throughout the year, such as Studio 666, American Carnage, and most notably Ty West's X. Where despite being known for some roles beforehand in the horror genre in her career, because of the amount of horror roles she's been in this year, many people have dubbed her the new Scream Queen of the horror genre. Which... Wow! 
I wouldn't say I'm against that statement, but of course, the reason why you probably clicked on this video, the reason why you probably know who she is, her biggest role in career thus far, by far, is playing a newest iteration of Wednesday Addams in the first season of her own Netflix series. That has absolutely blown up the charts on Netflix, with even Netflix themselves claiming, which I don't even know how accurate that is, but we'll go with it, that Wednesday is one of the most viewed shows on the entire streaming service, even getting more views than the most popular IPs on the service, like Stranger Things earlier this year, and has caused many, many trends across TikTok and other social media platforms, from her iconic dance scene in the series, to her overall mannerisms and acting and dialogue that she delivers over the course of the season's 8 episode run. And now many people around the world have Jenna Ortega on their eye as the newest rising star, as she has a very bright future ahead of her. She's already set to reprise her role as Tara Carpenter in the upcoming Scream 6 earlier next year, Wednesday is already getting renewed for a second season, and she's bound to get more roles in the future, it might solidify herself as one of the few Disney Channel stars that got out of Disney unscathed. For now. The reason I essentially just opened this video with listing her IMDb credits, is just to show how much range she has as an actress over the course of this past decade in her career. From comedies, drama, horror. You're a whore! Wear your whore makeup, you whore! A mix of several in the case of Wednesday. She has shown herself to be a talented actress, and has a very bright future ahead of her. And even outside the film and TV world, she has a very likable and humble persona, and is one of the main reasons why she's become Hollywood's new it girl, and she has a lot more to offer to the world than just her looks. But, because of her rising popularity as a star, many people try to take advantage of her success, and her likeness, and try to profit off of that, and use it to exploit her in ways that are very uncomfortable, and I guess let's just get into it because this is where the rabbit hole begins. Oh, Jesus Christ. So many people have created unofficial merchandise around Juno Ortega, and honestly, it's some of the funniest shit I've seen in a while. And honestly, I think we all need a laugh before we really get into the deep, dark stuff that really makes us question reality. So um, yeah, let's just let's just get into some of this uh, merchandise and just have a quick little laugh at it because it's a, uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, okay, first off, we have these Juno uh, Ortega shirts. These ones aren't so bad. Now we catch me wearing this. Or this? Or, uh, oh yeah, or this one. This, this is a really good one, oh my god. And and this one too, this is great. This one doesn't even have the right actress's name on this, are you kidding me? You had one job, people. I actually can't imagine people wearing this in public, unironically. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. There's also a Jenna Ortega sink candle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, there's also a Jenna Ortega mug. Finally, something I can piss in. There's also a Jenna Ortega yearly calendars. Uh, there's posters. Is she running for president in this one? There are necklaces of her, cardboard cutouts, blanket covers, pillows, and a bunch of other things I bet you a shiny dollar that she consented to none of this being made about her. And she isn't seeing any of the profits from this stuff. You know what, if it's that easy to make Jenna Ortega merchandise and not get any sort of season desists, Let's, let's try it out a little bit. Let's try and smell out some uh, homemade Jenna Ortega merchandise. Do you want the Jenna Ortega lamp for her to line up your day? Well, you can have it for the low price of $59.99 plus $14.99 in shipping. And they could be all yours. I broke the lamp! Would you like to have the Jenna Ortega pool stick for her to pull you out of your crippling depression? You can have it for the low price of $69.99 plus $29.99 in shipping because I need the money. Would you like to have the Jenna Ortega dartboard for her to straighten your shop without actually talking to women? You can have it for the price of $189.99 plus $169.99 in shipping because fuck you. I I thought this would be funnier in my head, honestly. I don't, it's fucking stupid. But as you can tell probably, this is one of the many ways that people are trying to profit off Jenna Ortega and her likeness for their own profits. But at least they're not trying to, you know, stalk her personal life and try to uncover her sexuality, like some people are. Speaking of... This probably has to be one of the most infuriating things about being a well-known young actress in Hollywood. And that is the fact that people will make an entire career off of trying to stalk you at every single moment, and trying to theorize of every single decision you ever make, even though it's nobody's business. A lot of people don't really see celebrities as people with feelings, lives, and you know, privacy. And we have 
paparazzi and many many tabloids like TMZ that prey on these celebrities and their downfall and cross boundaries that you just shouldn't cross. And Jenna Ortega seems to be no exception to this. Jenna, over the shoulder. Jenna. Jenna, over the shoulder. Over here. Jenna, over the behind shoulder. you. Jenna, behind you. It seems like a trend nowadays with any popular young star from a musician, a YouTuber, actor. A select amount of people try to theorize and try to mold a specific type of person looking outward on their lives and their most, you know, their highlight reel essentially in interviews and in the movies that they watch and the TV shows that they're in and try to form a specific narrative around this person and how they should act around people and how they should be and what the personality traits are to when these celebrities actually are, you know, people that act differently than they do on screen or on stage or whatever. These select few troglodytes try to attack these people, the celebrities, for no actual reason, they're just mad about them not fitting to their little specific mold in their fantasy land. One of the most troubling things about this is that you get select tabloids that will try to, you know, make concepts and try to theorize about celebrities' lives out of complete rubbish. A lot of these, you know, clickbaity articles around Jenna Ortega mainly revolve around her personal life, like her love life, what's her sexuality, you know, things that people shouldn't really, you know, know about. You'll get these articles that will try to, like, tie very loose events together to try a creative narrative around a specific person like Jenna Ortega. Out of things that just make no sense. It's literally just reading between the lines that there's nothing between them. It's like a fucking mind game, like your Charlie Day is always sunny. And it will lead to some pretty desperate articles, like, um, let's see. Is Jenna Ortega gay? Her sexuality and love life. Is Jenna Ortega gay? Why fans think that she is transgender. Brother. Brother. Is Jenna Ortega gay? Her sexual orientation may shock you. I don't really give a shit, but okay. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Here's the major issue with this. Beyond the obvious one of, you know, lack of boundaries and privacy, is the fact that people are trying to make Jenna Ortega something that she probably might not be. From her diet, her lifestyle, her sexuality. People wanting not only the character of Wednesday to be gay, but also Jenna as well. People think that just because that she calls her co-stars wives in interviews that they think that she's gay or that she made out with Maddie Ziegler in the fallout that she's automatically a lesbian. And let me just clarify this right now before people think I'm homophobic or whatever. The issue is not like if Jenna is actually gay or bi or whatever in real life. I have no issue with that. The issue is the people that are trying to make a narrative out of that and are trying to make Jenna into something that she might not actually be. If she's gay, that should be her decision to make. You shouldn't make somebody come out the closet without their consents. You know, it kind of defeats the whole purpose of, you know, it being a big deal. And then you got the people who are just trying to peek into her personal life and just trying to figure out like what every single relationship that she's ever been in. Like the whole one like where she was like apparently with the guy from Shazam and like because they've been to a couple events together that they're apparently in a relationship or something like that. Why? Why do you give a shit? And then there's these people actually get pissed off because it's like, oh, what if she's not gay if she's straight? It's like, dude, Stop making a narrative that isn't true, all right? It's so ridiculous. And to those people, if you're that insecure about somebody's sexuality getting on your nerves that much, you should probably go see a therapist to check up on your you know, mental health issues. It shouldn't matter if she's straight or bi or gay or trans. It's none of our business what her love life and her sexuality and her personal life is. If she wants to talk about that stuff, that should be her decision to make. Not some random article on the internet trying to speculate about her personal belongings and stuff like that that just simply does not need to be on the internet. But still, there will be people that will continue to be sheep and continue to put their heads in the sand and try to make Jenna Ortega something that she might not be. And one of the many things that people try to do to form their own version of Jenna Ortega is through fanfiction of herself. And uh, yeah, that's a thing. You know what, let's just take a break from the series chat for a second and look at some good old fashioned fanfiction on DeviantArt and Tumblr respectfully, I think. The home of all the fanfictions, especially ones based on real life people. I found a couple on the internet and uh, let me just read you some excerpts that I found while researching for this video. It's a, uh, it's quite a lot. All right, here's this one. You as Jenna Ortega's boyfriend? You as like the Netflix series or, or as me? I'm gonna say me, because I'm selfish. Warning, hickey, making out. Oh God, people, <laughs> watch out. Okay, let's just read this. Whenever Jenna comes to your house, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. People. Whenever Jenna comes home, you always hug her, missing her presence. You and Jenna always listen to Taylor Swift. And sometimes you guys dance to Taylor songs. 
You're always there when Jenna needs your support. You guys are the best couple. You always compliment Jenna and she will always blush at your compliment. Compliment? What? I can't even- I can't speak right now, brother. What the hell is this? You guys are inseparable. Sometimes, when Jenna comes home tired, you always gave her a massage. Sometimes Jenna kissed you randomly. If that simple kissed, kissed. What the fuck? Kiss turned into a makeout session. You always treat her to a date. She doesn't like seeing other girls around you. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. If she sees a girl f acting flirtier with you, expect her to give you a hickey on your neck. What the fuck is this? Jenna likes complimenting you too. She would say you're handsome and you're her one and only pretty boy. I'm sorry, brother. I can't. I can't. Oh my god. Oh my god, I actually need to cry. I, know I cry so hard. Why is this so funny to me? Once again, this proves that you shouldn't be overstepping boundaries and making stuff about real life people. Like that excerpt, that wasn't Wednesday Adams fanfiction. That was Jenna Ortega fanfiction based on a real person. It's just, to me, it's incredibly creepy, although I laughed a whole lot, but being serious, it is incredibly creepy and really weird about idolizing somebody that you don't even really know in your personal life. Speaking of, let's get into that. Now, this is a major linchpin in this video that I really wanted to talk about. And that's the major difference between, you know, respecting a celebrity and admiring somebody successful. And then there's just over idolizing a celebrity to the point where you obsess over somebody that you don't even know in your personal life. The two may seem similar on the surface, but couldn't be more different from each other. Like, for example, I really respect Anthony Mackie. He's charismatic, he's very well spoken, really funny, and overall seems like a very well put together guy. And if I ever got the chance to meet him in person, first I would call him a bitch for getting beaten by Eminem. You embarrassed? This guy's a gangster? His real name is Clarence. But that doesn't mean I idolize him to the point where I obsess over his entire life and everything that he does inside his personal life and just everything he does all the time. Not only is that incredibly toxic and really dehumanizing, you're making your own fantasy of somebody that you don't even know. This is an issue that every celebrity has to some extent. There are people that, that follow them that really just idolize them and don't really even seem as grounded humans at certain points. And there's just a good chunk of people in society that just don't really see celebrities as actual grounded human beings. You know, we basically get to see their highlight reel of their entire lives. We get to see the movie that they're in, we get to see them at the red carpet, the premieres, living their extravagant lifestyles, to the point where you forget that these people do have struggles, the fact that these people do have problems, sometimes relatable ones, sometimes not. And a lot of these people don't really see these celebrities as people, they see them more as like theme park attractions, something to gander at, something to awe at, to inspire to be. Which, I mean, the inspiration part isn't that bad, but the thing is just that people just see them as this entirely separate thing that they aren't. Everyone has a different life when they're in public and when they're in private. Doesn't matter if you're famous or not. And in fact, most celebrities are weirdos. Probably weirder than you and me, for the most part. And people don't really seem to pick up on that. A lot of people look at Jenna Ortega in that certain select way, and you realize like her in interviews and the red carpets and the movies that she's in and all that type of stuff. And you realize it's really only a small percentage of her actual life. There's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes. And a lot of stuff that she's opened up about that isn't very, you know, happy. I mean, she's basically opened up at every single interview that she's a part of. That she has struggles with, you know, body images and mental health and all that type of stuff. And you forget that, you know, yeah, just because she's in the movie and she gets paid a whole lot to be an actress. That these people do have issues. They are actual human beings. At the end of the day, we're all human. And the fact that there are so many people out there that are obsessing over this woman in a very unhealthy fashion. I'm not just talking about the people that are just a fan of her for her work and her personality, but I'm talking about like the people that are like make fan accounts and just do nothing but just repost interviews of her and just obsess over this woman day in, day out. And just constantly trying to figure out every single aspect of her life. It's fine to be a fan of somebody, it's fine to admire somebody for their work and their achievements, but you should keep that admiration between you and that person at arm's distance. Because if you get to a certain point, it'll just be obsessing over somebody that doesn't even know you exist. And that's all I got to say on the matter. Now let's get to the stuff that really just pisses me off. Now this is what really inspired me to do this video. This is the type of stuff and the subject matter that really made me question humanity and made me lose a little faith in humanity. It kind of drove me insane with how deep and dark this stuff got. And it wasn't even that deep of a rabbit hole to go down. If we're in Dante's Inferno right now, we're like at the ninth circle. 
that's how bad some of this stuff is. Now, I might get a little heated over the course of this section of the video because I'm just very passionate about the subject matter. I just wanted to put that out there. Now, getting to the nitty gritty with this, uh, you know, beyond all the stupid stuff we talked about with like the merchandise and the fan fiction and you know, the articles and all that type of stuff, that's unnecessary. That's just really loud noise and it doesn't really matter that much. This genuinely makes my stomach turn. Over the course of researching for this video, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be interesting to look up Jenna Ortega on Reddit? See what communities are about her, see what people post about her. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. Oh my god. Uh, because what I found, well, I'll just show it to you. Now, um, well, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is going to get quite gross. So if you're sensitive to sexual topics and sexual comments, I recommend you turn away now or go jump, jump to the ending of the video or something like that because this is going to get rough. Okay, so uh, we got uh, Jenna Ortega Lust. That's our first subreddit we're going to go into. So I wish she lifted up that shirt. Oh my god. DM me if you want me to roleplay Jenna. Wonder what she smells like. I would lift her shirt up, pull her thong down a ear out, and... Oh my god. See what I mean by this? I would lift up that shirt and spank her before I... Let's just go to a different video. Or propose to her. Like, who cares? This is how she became a Caleb. The, the, the fuck's a Caleb? I mean, I, got, I know a guy named Caleb. I don't know what you're talking about. She can suck on all six and a half inches that I've got. No one asked. I want to F her tight Latina body so bad. I squirt my hot sperm deep. I can't, I hate, I, I hate this so much. This makes my skin crawl. Come on out, you rapist. Well, there he is. I mean, she's so fertile that there's no way that she wouldn't be impregnated. That, that someone actually typed that unironically and posted on a public service. What would you ask her to do if she could say yes? The most perverted of requests because her face just awakens something inside me. Put your feet on my face. Let me sniff your underclothes. Let me lick her shoes clean. Paint my house. I like this guy. I like that guy. He's cool. There's just a subreddit for her legs. Yeah, that's great. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. But, but you know what's the worst part about this? This isn't even the worst of it. Um, you know what's really the nice circle of hell? You know what's really the worst part that I, that, that genuinely makes my skin crawl, like, even more so than that shit on Reddit? Um, all the deepfake stuff. You can go on Google right now, you can search up gender or take a porn, and, uh, there are several deepfake porn videos of somebody that photoshopped Jenna Ortega's face onto someone else's naked body that I would bet was without her consent. And you can see Jenna Ortega's face doing very explicit things that um, I, I don't really want to describe. Uh, it's, it's just, don't, don't look it up, people, please. So I don't really have a scripted part for this portion of the video. I just kind of wanted to let my thoughts spill out. So, I know there are a lot of people that are going to come at me and be like, man, you're such a sim for Jenna Ortega. You're such a white knight. And to all those people, fuck you. Like, if, if you if you clearly just, if you just, if you only see that, you know where the fucking door is. You know where the video, click off. I don't fucking care about your opinion if you're, if you're only going to focus on that side of things. All right, this is a human being at the end of the day. This is somebody that is still a growing human being. Me and her were the exact same age, 20 years old, all right? Although I may know what it's like to be a woman or successful in the film industry or conventionally attractive, I know what it's like to be still a developing human being. Just because you turn 18 and you're considered an adult does not mean that you automatically know everything about your life and who you are. I would even argue there's some people in like their mid 30s and 40s that are still trying to figure out who they are. Uh, life is not a roadmap, you know, it's all, everyone's going in their own different direction and it just, it happens. And so someone who clearly is outspoken about her own mental health issues and her struggling to cope with a lot of other things in her life, shit like this genuinely makes me infuriated because I know what it's like to get taken advantage of by people, but the fact that people are trying to take advantage of that and use it to profit themselves to make fucking deep fake videos, which should be fucking illegal by the way, I'm sorry, I don't know how we've just gone this how many years with deep fake stuff and it has not been 
institutionalized in any sort of law in any sort of way. I mean, granted, a lot of the lawmakers in the U.S. still have, like, flip phones and pagers unironically, so it's gonna be, like, another decade before we actually get some laws in place. And by then, I mean, genuinely, like, it may look fake now, it may look, you know, like it was pr printed on the fucking 3DS, but trust me, in a decade, these deepfake porn videos will look like James Cameron and the Avatar crew made them. It's gonna look so pristine at a point that it's gonna blur the line of reality. Like, you're not gonna know what's, like, a Kim Kardashian sex tape or was someone just playing around their dad's PC for fun. And that's the thing. You know, this is just disgusting. It genuinely is. And it's all rooted in the same issue of people's loneliness in society. We are all lonely people. There's a certain select of people that just cannot feel that loneliness and that void in themselves because they hate themselves so much. And so they put it on someone else. And it causes a porn addiction, sincerely. A porn addiction is worse, if not on the same level, as drugs and alcohol, but no one likes to talk about it. Sex stuff is such a taboo subject in our society that we really just can't talk about it. In school, we barely get any sort of mention. Like, we barely know about the female reproduction system. I even know how the fuck women menstruate in high school. I had to have one of my managers tell me about it years later. No one talks about this type of stuff and it causes so many issues because everyone's so scared and wants to be so conservative about their own stuff regarding this. I understand I talked about, you know, you gotta keep your sexuality private, but I'm saying like, you know, sexual frustration and sexual things in our society, I think we need to bring up more. It's uncomfortable, yes, but that's the point. It's meant to be uncomfortable so we can actually fucking solve this thing. As someone who is finally freeing themselves from a porn addiction, you realize that there's so much more to life than just simple sexual arousal. The fact that people are more than just things to, you know, do things to. And a lot of these people don't see that, especially in people like Jenna Ortega, and just see a sex doll. They see it an object. And it goes through every single female. Jenna is just one of the many, many, many women who have this shit happen to them. And you know what the worst part is? This shit is easily accessible. This is not like I had to find a torrent browser for this bullshit. I had to, I literally just went on Google. I went to Reddit. I went to Tumblr. These are public things. And they hold this type of shit. Not only for Jenna Ortega, but so many other female actors and singers, what have you. Twitch streamers, YouTubers. And they constantly have this stuff. And barely anyone talks about it. But it's disgusting. And people actually make profit off of doing this type of bullshit. The only thing I've heard about this stuff recently is whenever like GBA Samar was talking about it. And, or like a little five minute video. Other than that, no one talks about this type of stuff. And it's disgusting. And you know this shit's on her mind and so many other females' minds when being public. And they're gonna be people like, oh, well, you know, she looks pretty on the red carpet, so she deserves everything that she got. And just because someone looks pretty doesn't mean that you just get to have access to whatever they do. It just means like, oh, we can just do whatever you want. We can just jerk off to her on our Kindle. And that's fucking gross, all right? Because it de demoralizes people and it makes your perception of women actual love that much harder. I may be a virgin, I may be someone who hasn't had any sort of dating experience in my 20 years of life so far, but I can tell you one thing from so many people who have actually gotten love. Sex is such a beautiful thing when done right. Intimacy is such a vulnerable place of who we are that it's genuinely a beautiful thing when done right. And I'm not just talking about like abstinence, but also people who like genuinely like wait to find the right person and they decide to spread that love with that person. It can be a beautiful experience. And there are so many people that just cannot grasp on who they are and cannot like who they are. And so they just latch onto whatever they can to give them the, the quick pleasure, the dopamine rush of masturbating. And that is just so sad to so many fucking people, in my opinion, because it's just, it genuinely is a huge issue in our society. And why my generation is one of the loneliest generations of all time. And it's just so frustrating. It's genuinely disgusting. And it's just like, it, it just, I, I wish there were something that I could do to help fix this. And you know what, like, even though I might be flawed, even though I might not be, you know, the most successful YouTuber of all time, I might not be the most attractive or fit, I cannot tell you how much better I feel as a person researching for this video than I do right now, because although I might not be a perfect person, although I might not be where I want to be right now, at least I'm not known as the guy making deep for fake porn videos about Jenna Ortega. At least I'm not the guy making you know, videos of myself jerking off the photos of Jenna Ortega and talking about my sexual things I want to do to her or any other woman in the film industry. Like if you want to talk about Millie Bobby Brown or Billie Eilish or whatever the fuck you want, at least I'm not that guy. At least I'm not down that bad that I'm willing to put that stuff on the internet unironically and just add to that whole thing that 
I bet is on Jenna's mind and so many other women that just want more things to be focused on themselves than just their bodies and their images. And that's the problem with just the Hollywood sphere is that people only focus on your looks and how successful you are. And just people are so scared to be vulnerable. And it's so sad. It's genuinely sad. And I, I say, like, tr trust me, one, if you take away one thing from this video, please, please just wean off the porn, wean off that type of stuff because it genuinely makes you feel a lot better about who you are and puts in perspective how much more a life has to offer than just quick pleasure because that can only go, go get you so far. And it just, fuck it. It's fucking frustrating. It actually pisses me off that this shit gets made and no one talks about it. It's all under the surface and it's right there and just no one brings it up. And people, I gotta, I just, I hope, I wanna do something to help this out. I don't even care if five people watch this video. I sincerely hope that this brings up some sort of thing in the conversation regarding deep fake stuff and just all the sexual stuff on the internet that's just way too, way too just harmful for especially people like Jenna who are still growing up essentially so it's just that's why i hate this stuff so much because it's just so disgusting and so demoralizing and it's just no one really talks about it but uh yeah yay hope you guys had a fun time uh let's just wrap this bitch up so if you stuck around for this long you probably know what the whole point of the video is just Treat people how you want to be treated, you know? Although I might not know who Jenna Ortega is personally, doesn't mean that she isn't a human being that struggles with things every single day. You know, just because we see the highlight reel of their lives, just like on social media, does not mean that these people struggle every single day just like you and me. Everyone struggles. Celebrities are not immune to that. No matter how much money they have, no, much, no matter how much fame they have, life is life. And the fact that we have people that are just willing to sexually exploit people like her just for the sake of views or just for the sake of profit generally makes my stomach turn. I actually hate it so much. It's gross. I think it is time that we as a society really just take a hard look at ourselves and realize this stuff happens to pretty much every single young popular star today, both guys and girls. And it's really only going to get worse the more technology and social media grows if we don't actually stop and actually have a conversation about this type of behavior. But at the end of the day, I just really want to get this message out there because it just happens to a lot more people than you think. And we gotta stop treating celebrities like they're not human or also get like another Britney Spears situation where she literally had a mental breakdown and everyone just kind of laughed at it for the internet for years on end. I don't want Jenna or any future it girl to suffer the same grossness that a lot of these weirdos on the internet do that really do ruin a lot of the true fans for them and kind of like lump them in with a lot of these people and just makes their love and passion for Hollywood and cinema just that much worse because of these weird people that decide to ruin the party for everyone. At the end of the day, there's so much more to life than just, you know, obsessing over somebody that probably will never know who you actually are. Instead of just actually focus on yourself, actually like yourself for who you are, focus on yourself, focus on your mental health, focus on things that make you happy and things that want to make you succeed and make you somebody more than just the guy that jacks off the Jenna Ortega. And actually try to do things to actually help out this world versus just exploiting in a sexual fantasy or just trying to make money off of somebody else's fame. Just value your life. I mean, I got a whole lot of views for this video, but it just feels so cathartic to get this stuff off my chest, you know? And to actually start a conversation around this behavior. Now, I'm just a but I'm gonna stop rambling for now. Please like and subscribe for more content. My socials are in the pinned comment. And please, if you don't any of the stuff that I've seen in this video, touch some grass for the love of God. Anyways, peace out.